Constitutional Assembly begins talks on new constitution amidst joint opposition protest. Auditor General reveals status of national audit bill. FCID investigation against former presidential chief of staff Garmini Sinarath and two others. Court considers environmentalist petition against Port City Project. Notices issued on respondents. Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull set to arrive in Sri Lanka on Thursday. Hello there, very good evening and welcome to your Prime Time News Bulletin. I'm Shane Silva. And I'm Rasniya Fada. Let's start off with a look at tonight's top stories. The Parliament convened as a Constitutional Assembly today to consider the interim report of the Steering Committee on a new constitution. For the first time in the history of Sri Lanka, Parliament has been transformed into a Constitutional Assembly and all parties, all races are seated around the same table having prepared this interim report. In truth, this is a historic occasion. This is not the complete document. This is not the final document. Only proposals have been put forward today. The proposals of every party have been included in the interim report. The Constitutional Assembly can amend this as required. I have the President's election manifesto with me. In this, he proposes a framework where he will not seek to amend articles that require a two-thirds majority. This is the opinion of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. These are the limits of the SLFP. It may be a good constitution, but once we put it to a referendum, the problem will be the cost of living and the sitem issue. Then the constitution will be forgotten. Even the best constitution would be rejected. We are asking for a system without an executive presidency and which empowers parliament in line with what existed prior to 1977. We want a multi-party democracy in this country. The key issue now is that you must not fall for the manufactured demons and become partners to the projects to maintain the executive presidency. We have serious doubts that a group that wishes to protect the executive system is behind the demonstrations and the noise. On the 9th of March 2016, the entire parliament agreed to the resolution that the constitution must be changed. We are ashamed by the processions and demonstrations that are being staged today. This is not a draft constitution. This must be understood in the first place. We are not approving a draft constitution. This is a discussion paper. It is a document that we must discuss. As I mentioned at the beginning, the proposal to abolish the unitary state has been included in this report. Now in Tamil it says Orumetanada, which means united. Isn't this a step towards a federal system? It is our position that the parliament should be able to draft legislation for the entire country. There should be no power to partition or limit this. None of the members of the UNP have voiced any opposition against this. Similarly, the Tamil National Alliance has not opposed this. So this report is a report drafted by the UNP and the TNA. MP Dulip Vijayasekara, who was removed from the position of Deputy Minister today, crossed over to the opposition benches in Parliament. Speaking from the government benches today, Dulip Vijayasekara voiced his opposition to the interim report of the Steering Committee on the Constitution. Honourable Speaker, at this instance I voice my opposition to the constitution which has already been opposed by the clergy and the Mahanayakas of the three sects. No, that, that's not a point of order, sir. I, I must continue. This chamber is a committee of parliament. Normally when crossing over, a statement has to be made and the mace has to be in the chamber. If you are unaware of this, it is pointless to do anything else. When you make a statement when the mace is not present, does it carry any value? <laughs> Subsequently, Dulip Vijay Sekar crossed over to the opposition benches. In 1988 and 1989, while the torture chamber in Batalanda was operational, my father was abducted and shot to death. It was against such a backdrop that I acquiesced to the president's request and joined the government to do good for the country. But nothing has happened so far. I want to kneel and beg forgiveness from my father for sitting with the UNP in this supreme chamber for the past two years and two months. 
I also wish to beg forgiveness from all the voters in the Biagama and Dompe electorates in the Gampa district if I have caused them any inconvenience. Today, the joint opposition MPs and supporters protested in Batharamulla against the new proposed constitution. Heavy traffic was reported on one lane of the Kalambu Batramula Road as a result of this protest. <laughs> Thereafter, former MP Dulip Vijay Sekhara, who was seated with the opposition in parliament today, joined the protest. Those in the government are deaf. They hear nothing. They are trying to pass this forcibly. Therefore, we, the joint opposition with the leader of Mahindra Raj Paksa and with those who love the motherland, have come here next to parliament to defeat this constitution. The Audit Service Commission has not performed for the past two years. Auditor General Garmini Vijay Singh has speaking exclusively to News First Zulfik Fazan today, commented on the matter as well as the National Audit Bill. Mr. Auditor General, 939 days, where is the Audit Bill? Uh, audit bill is always going up and down and uh, here and there, uh, last, uh, last month it was in the uh, cabinet and uh, there was a uh, committee they appointed uh, for uh, further review of the uh, audit bill and uh, that has been uh, put into the cabinet and with this source amendment again it has come to us and uh, attorney general and uh, uh, legal rapport etc etc so you now recently members of the cabinet were saying that it was passed in cabinet has it actually passed uh, actually uh, it has not passed how many times has the national audit bill been amended so far uh, well, uh, now it's uh, almost uh, t uh, 23 times. Uh, the amendment what I uh, propose is a very uh, serious amendment. Uh, so uh, if it uh, take place, I don't think that it can be uh, passed by the parliament because there are so many uh, uh, proposed uh, violation of the constitutions too. So we discussed matter with the uh, even uh, uh, legal draft and he also a little bit uh, confused about that. And uh, so uh, further, I, I suppose it will take uh, time. You say it's going to take time. How long? I don't know. How can I say it? Because I don't know how many times it goes again and again and again. So it should again go back to the uh, 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 cabinet. Of so course. if there's going to be a delay, I don't suppose there will be any financial discipline. Uh, so basically for last uh, uh, two decades, it has been decided uh, uh, by the all the author authorized uh, uh, people and uh, relevant uh, uh, responsible people uh, that the uh, uh, chief accounting officers has not been um, uh, taken proper actions against the uh, uh, these uh, malpractices and the uh, mismanagement. Uh, so that's why uh, it has been proposed to uh, um, uh, take over to the uh, by the uh, Auditor General, uh, but there are so many uh, resistance for that uh, concern. The Audit Commission, is there an Audit Commission? Yeah, Commission is there, but it is uh, it has no any power to uh, do anything. Uh, just uh, laying because we uh, uh, we uh, formed the Audit Commission uh, after 19th Amendment, we assume that uh, immediately after uh, um, uh, after uh, establish the Audit Service Commission, that audit uh, will get uh, get passed. Without Audit uh, Act, uh, there is no uh, work uh, to uh, Audit Service Commission. So up to now, uh, it is uh, not actually uh, properly functioning. How much do the taxpayers pay to function this? But, uh, when you think about the uh, performance of the Audit Service Commission, it is uh, actually zero. So for the last uh, two years, uh, every month we expended more than uh, two million to the Audit Service uh, Commission, but uh, no outcomes uh, from the Audit Service Commission. Without actually the uh, Audit uh, Act, uh, they have no way to do anything. If uh, Audit Bill uh, comes enacted, so a lot of things can be um, uh, mitigated because uh, the, the law, that uh, problems available uh, today is the due to dilution of the uh, institutional base of the country. So it can be uh, uh, step by step can be developed if uh, Audit Act uh, comes into power because uh, it has been given a lot of uh, powers to the Auditor General to again think about the monitoring about the uh, um, disciplinary system of the country or the uh, financial discipline of the uh, country. And 
Audit Services Commission has been established. It's been two years. 48 million rupees spent by the taxpayers with a service rank of zero. And the all important National Audit Bill. What's going to happen to the National Audit Bill? It's still not passed and it's still languishing amendments. We report, you decide, and we will keep a watch of what happens to this. The 45th annual session of the International Pepper Community commenced today under the auspices of President Poitri Pala Sirisena. The event, which will be held until the 2nd of November in Kandy, is been attended by around 100 representatives from member countries. If you take a look at the export trade, it is not just pepper. But if you also consider the tea industry in our country and other export items, we are well aware that there are issues during the re-exporting process of these items. There was a grievance among the pepper farmers in our country over the past couple of months where the prices dropped during the re-exporting process, which resulted in the farmer being unable to sell his produce. The government discussed this matter on numerous occasions to find solutions for this issue. It is absolutely important that the quality of items, especially food items, are on par with the accepted standards when exporting and re-exporting. The necessary facilities to make this possible should also be provided. <laughs> President Sirisena also attended a pepper spice exhibition organized parallel to the 45th annual session of the international pepper community. Thereafter, an award ceremony was held to felicitate contributors to the progress of the pepper industry. Speaking to reporters in Sirikota today, Prime Minister Rani Vikramasinghe responded to a question on the Trincomalee Harbour. <laughs> No, we have no need to give the Trincomalee Harbour to India. What we said is, India or anybody else can come and develop parts of the Trincomalee Harbour, like the terminal, the jetty and the oil tanks. We have been speaking of a new company that will come and build some oil tanks. 40% of the Bay of Bengal falls under Indian territory. If India is prepared to bring goods to the Trincomalee port and re-export from there, we have no issue in giving one of the terminals. At present, areas surrounding the Bay of Bengal are not developed. Water breakers are not being built. Therefore, we are met with requests. We will identify all sectors including tourism, agriculture and fisheries and create two large zones for them. One is the southwest corridor with two airports and two harbors. We have entered into talks with Singapore, Japan and India to develop the Trincomalee Harbor. We hope to develop the agriculture and industrial sectors in the northern province under a special program as an economy destroyed by the conflict. In a few days, we will see openings in the markets of China, India and Singapore. We are now discussing investment opportunities with India. Large amounts of funds are coming in from India and Japan for us to develop the Trincomalee Harbour. I will hold a discussion with the President and prepare an economic agenda for the country for the next few years. What is the Prime Minister's stance? Former Presidential Chief of Staff Garmini Senarath and two others were summoned before the Police Financial Crimes Investigations Division today. But the trio did not appear today. Police were informed through an attorney that Garmini Senarath and the two others would not be able to appear before the FCID today. The attorney had informed that they would appear on another date. In addition to Garmini Senarat, the Police Financial Crimes Investigation Division had summoned Neil Bandara Tantri, a former Ministry Secretary, and Piedasa Kudabalage, a former CEO of a state-owned enterprise during the previous government. In the case against the Colombo Port City Development Project, the Court of Appeal today ordered that notices be issued on the respondents to appear before the court on the 13th of December. The Court of Appeal granted leave to proceed today for a petition filed by the Centre for Environmental Justice Private Limited in 2015. The order was issued by a bench comprising of the President of the Court of Appeal, Justice LTB Dehidenia and Justice Shiran Gunaratna. Among the respondents cited in the petition are the Sri Lanka Ports Authority, the Department of Coast Conservation and the Attorney General. The petitioner notes that the project will cause immense harm to the coast, fisheries and coral reefs and that the state does not have the right to lease land for this project as per the act established in the Sri Lanka Ports Authority. 
The Gamma the Initiative is now well established and highly regarded in both nationally and internationally. The achievements have not only been made possible through the strength, trust and unwavering support given to us by you, the public, giving to the giving giving to the people through Gammatha. The latest example of this is the Pilakumra project in Balangoda, which was completed and declared open yesterday. This was the state of the entrance route to the Pilakumra village in Maine. The road, which flooded with the slightest of rain, was the cause of great distress among the residents of several surrounding villages. Even though they raised this issue with the authorities on countless occasions, they received no response. The project was identified through a research project compiled by News First together with the University of Peradeniya. On the 1st of July this year, work on the entrance road to the Pilakumra village began. The project is expected to benefit over 300 families in the Polvata, Keselvata, Tennavata, Hennyaya and Pananakanda villages. Due to the commitment and dedication of the locals in the area, the project was completed within a short period of time, enabling it to be declared open today. Technical Officer GWS Senadiro's efficiency and untiring efforts to ensure high standards in the construction of the project should be commended. The dedication of contractors OM Chandra Soma and Vyaman Chandra Soma who assisted in the project should also be praised. I consider this as a blessing. I got an opportunity to engage in this task much conveniently as a state sector official through this program. In a society which is unwilling to donate or contribute one's own land for a common purpose, R. M. Vijay Ratna gave his generous consent of building a bridge across his paddy land. It is visible to us that Sirasa is working for the people. To do my part to society, I gave my entire paddy land to construct the bridge. I urge the entire country to assist Sirasa in such initiatives. In addition to the bridge, this staircase was constructed on a land donated by H.T. Jinadasa, not expecting any financial benefit in return. This is my livelihood. I was extremely happy. I told them to just construct the road. The work Sirasa does is not for their personal benefit, it is for the common good, a public service to the country. So I asked the entire country to donate and contribute to such endeavours. Through the generosity of R. M. Vijay Ratna and H. T. Jinadasa, the Gammada Initiative was able to do this with the people, for the people. The foundation stone for a bridge in the Titta Vellavata area in Ambalantota was placed today under the Samata Sahana program in the Hambantota district. The event was graced by Deputy Leader of the United National Party, Minister Sajit Premadasa. 39.2 million rupees has been allocated for the construction of this bridge. The chap who speaks greatly of patriotism and the cardboard hero who speaks of protecting the country at political fora has publicly spoken of bombing the institute that drafts legislation for the country. You cast your ballot and elect 225 people to parliament to make decisions on behalf of you. But this person says parliament must be bombed. Another is of the stance that shots must be fired. You will understand now the new political force with the symbol of the flower bud is not coming to make the people live. They are not here to protect the country. They are trying to take power through bombings, shootings, assaults and cause harm to the people. The true nature of the flower bud is exposed. Two police STF personnel died when a train crashed onto a car at a railway crossing in Andadola which is located between Ambalangoda and Balapitiya. <laughs> SP Ruan Gunasekara, the police media spokesperson, said a woman was injured in the incident. They were returning from a wedding when they met with the tragedy. According to the railway's control room, the car entered the path of the express train, plying from Mathura to Colombo. The deceased were two sub-inspectors attached to the police special task force. As mentioned in your headlines tonight, the Australian High Commission announced today that Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull will visit Sri Lanka on Thursday, the 2nd of November. Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull will meet President Maithri Pala Sirisena and Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe during his visit. In a statement, Prime Minister Turnbull said this year marks the 70th anniversary of Australia's bilateral relationship with Sri Lanka and he is delighted to be able to visit Sri Lanka. It goes on to say that Malcolm Turnbull looks forward to continuing discussions on strengthening economic links, defence engagement and combating transnational crime, particularly people smuggling. 
The United National Party Colombo North Balamandala meeting was held yesterday under the auspices of party leader Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe. Although the most suitable time for us is to have the elections in January, the issue rests with the Elections Commission and not with us alone. The time for the elections is something that should be decided by the Elections Commission and we believe the Commission will decide as may be necessary. Everyone is of the same stance that the elections should be held in January. First of all, we must establish reconciliation and economic stability. If that has collapsed, then this little cannot even be given. Now we should finish what's remaining. We are not saying that there aren't other issues. However, we have to address these two to three questions if we are to form a proper government. I will remind you once again, Mahindra Rajapaksa ran away because he could not solve these problems. We took over the reins with these problems at hand and I must thank all the ministers for facing these issues. These elections should be won in order to solve the remaining issues. <laughs> Everyone says that although economy is all right and democracy has been established, none of the Rajapaksas have been caught. This is a question for me as it is for you. There are various ways in which committees have been appointed, questions have been raised and the parliament convened. The parliament has convened with the president in attendance. It has also convened with the prime minister in attendance. All these people have been brought and questioned. We cannot go back to that day when Sarat Fonseca was dragged out of his office and dumped in a cell and put in a jumper suit. We cannot do things like that. We said that if Sarat Fonseca was clothed in the Yahapalana rule, they would be forced to wear underwear five times over. Those who were forced to wear underwear were forced to come back and plead for bail. Yahapalana today is effective to them as well. <laughs> The people are watching from across the country for the United National Party to form a government. While in power, we have raised a question within the opposition. However, I must remind you that as the elephant needs a bit of time to rise up and get moving, it rarely can be made to stop once it gets moving. <laughs> The World Bank issued a statement to clarify its position on the management of the Yala National Park. The World Bank says simply closing a block in the Yala National Park is not a holistic nor sustainable solution and is not the type of solution the bank would propose. It adds holding back funding would defeat the purpose of supporting better management. The World Bank says ongoing discussions between the bank and the government on the country's park management is held with a view of ensuring that vulnerable resources are managed for the benefit of those employed in the parks. This includes the local community whose livelihood depends on tourism in the park. Humanitarian and Relief Agency World Vision Lanka celebrated its 40th anniversary today. The campaign named It Takes a Nation to End Physical and Sexual Violence Against Children was launched under the patronage of State Minister of Finance Iran Vikramaratna and Minister of Women and Children Affairs Chandrani Bandara. Sexual abuse and exploitation, child labor or early marriages is not new in our country. We also know that online child abuse is increasing and images are becoming more extreme, more sadistic and more violent. I don't need to highlight the depth of the problem and damage child abuse and exploitation causes to a nation. Growth Center development is about competition. How about those who cannot compete? Today we are having a debate in Parliament on creating a new constitution for this country. How appalling it is to hear that some member of parliament could say that parliament must be bombed. But just as a country needs its executive, its legislature and its judiciary to be in equilibrium, so does a society need civil society organizations and NGOs to serve its communities. In the U.S., the first charges to arise from the investigation by the Justice Department's special counsel, Robert Mueller, into the alleged Russian meddling into the U.S. election campaign were made today. Paul Manafort, a former campaign manager for President Trump, and an associate, Rick Gates, were indicted by a federal grand jury on 12 counts, including conspiracy against the United States and money laundering. 
The indictment said Manfort and Gates generated tens of millions of dollars of income from working for Ukrainian political parties and leaders and laundered money through US and foreign entities to hide payments between 2006 and 2016. These charges come 5 months into the Mueller investigation. By contrast, after 10 months there has yet to be any charges to come from the Presidential Commission of Inquiry into the bond issuances here in Sri Lanka. The Sri Lankan cricket team returned to the island this evening following their series against Pakistan. The Sri Lanka Pakistan tour comprised of two test matches, five one-day internationals and three T20s. Sri Lanka only managed to win the test series during the tour. Sadly, they did not manage to win a single game in the 50-over format or in the T20s. We leave you tonight with cartoonist Hasan Khalado Hetri's take on today's news. For the news first team, I'm Dasmiya Tawan, and I'm Shreyan Silva. Take care and good night.